So what I have here is basically a spline. And I can just move it like this. And I can just create my fence. Right? I will show you how, uh, how I create it. It's very simple, actually. So maybe we can put a fence here. Okay. So let's start. Let's go to our test scan here. We will create everything here. Let's create a blueprint class. And I will call this, uh, it's just actor, okay? Just call it actor. I will call it PP, this line, simple. I will save it, double click on this. It will open in my new window. I can just click here. And now I can just put this spline mesh here. Spline, just a spline. That's all I need to do. So if I drag the blueprint here, I can just drag this spline, move it. And if I hold Alt, I can just duplicate it. I can just keep doing something like this until I have like, I don't know, a little fence for me. I can just rotate it if I want. There you go. So what you can do with this is basically you can spawn some meshes here using the procedural tools. Now, if you want to use them, you can go to here, type procedural and procedural content generation framework. I already have it. So I won't click on it, but if you do, you will need to restart. And let's call, let's create right click. Let's go to PCG, PCG graph. I can just click on this and PCG live stream fence. And I can double click on this. And you will see that you have a graph like this. I will remove the camera so you can take a look at all the properties here. Now, what you want to have is an input and you need a spline to get a spline data. Now, how does this actor know that you have the spline? First, let's put it in the world so you can see what's going on. Let's put it here. Okay, that's our procedural component. Now, I want to spawn some meshes. Okay, so what I can do, um, actually, let, let's put another node here. Let's call spline, spline sampler, and let's just put it like this. And then you can press tab and type the static mesh spawner. And I already have a fence here from Megascans. Let's go here. It should be this one. Mesh entries, click plus, go here, and then click the arrow button. And let's see what happens. So as you can see, my fence is not there. And the reason is not there is because I haven't told the procedural component that this spline is actually the spline that you want to take a look at when you spawn things. So when you click on this, get a spline data, you can put an actor filter. And in the actor filter, you can put all world actors. Okay, there's another thing you need to do. If you put by tag, okay, and you put none, it will search for a tag, like either name, <laughs> none, I guess. Okay, so everything ha can have a tag here. If I go here and press tag, type tag, you can see that you have component tags here. It's a way for you to tag specific types of actors in your game. So what you can do, instead of going here and put the tag, you can just put it on the blueprint itself. You can click here, type tag, and then click here, and then I can just put I don't know, test. And now I can put my test. So what will happen now is that this thing will be recognized 
as a test. If I put like test two, it has another attack, so it won't be recognized. So let me just type test here. And now you have a fence. Now, there are multiple, multiple ways you can do this thing. And let's just start by showing you how to, how to arrange this. If you go here to the spline sample, you have the subdivisions. So if you increase the subdivisions, for example, like three, you will have something like this. But you will notice that the shorter the spline, the more subdivisions it has. So for this kind of case, it won't work that well. So what I can do is instead of putting subdivisions, I can put distance. And I can check here, if I hover on this mesh, I can check how, how big or how small it is. The, the size, it says is 202 centimeters on X. So I will go for 302 centimeters. And there you go. If you want to be like, adjust things a little bit, you can just put like 295, for example, and it will make everything like, you know, closer to each other. It's just a, a matter of tweaking stuff. Now, what if the case I have my landscape and what I will do is just to sculpt something here. Not that much, it's a little bit. Okay, so you see that my spline, it's only following, you know, the spline and it's not really following the mesh. So instead of going here and, you know, going up like this and try to fix it manually, there is something you can do in the procedural component that can make you, you know, project the things. So I believe it's called project, yeah, projection. So you will project these points into the landscape Let's just put the output here and you can just click here. And what you will have now, it's your mesh is in the right position. The problem is the mesh is also projecting the rotation of the landscape. So each landscape has a polygon and each polygon has like some normals and everything. If you change it, like, it will definitely change. So it's following the direction of the landscape. So naturally, when you get to this kind of case where you want to rotate, they will all look in the same direction, right? It's like just here, it's that X axis. So it's very simple to fix. Just go here and in the projection, you don't want to project rotations. There you go. And now, now it's fine. Now what I can do is to go to my spline and it doesn't matter where I put it, if it's up or down, I can just go back here and it will always follow your spline. I can just go here and if I want, I want, I can add another spline. I can move things like this. There you go. Now I have a, a little fence for my house. So there are a lot of things you can do with procedural components, like this one, for example. If you want to take a look at how I made this example here, you can just go and I, I will put a link in the description where you can watch the stream where I do it. Actually, we have a video on it too. And you can take a look at how we create this from scratch. And I will go into all the details here. Okay. So what else you can do here? You could close this plank if you want, because I know some people will be thinking like, hey, what if I want to close my spline? Uh, you just need to go to your, let's just click on this plank here. A little bit hard to choose. There you go. 
So this is my spline. And there is an option here for closed loop. You just need to click on that. And now you have a closed loop there. Now it will try to close as best as it can. So it will be better if like you kind of close it yourself and then you, you know, just can just add a spline point here if you want, if you want to tweak it. You can add another one here. There you go. It will be the best if you do this kind of changes. But if you want to close it, you can definitely can. You just need to tell the spline to close it. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this live stream. I will try to do more and more live streams in the future. I kind of run out of ideas sometimes. So if you have any idea, let me know in the comments in the video. I will, I read all of them. Trust me, sometimes there are a lot, but I, we really read your, your comments. So if you have any idea, just let me know and I will do it in the live stream next time. So if you want to also learn more, make sure to check our website where we show you how to create an action game from scratch. And you can start the first lesson for free. You can start right now and you can check if it's something like it will benefit you or not. I will put a, a link there. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming.